Hello, everyone. Once again, I am comedian impressionist Marcus, and welcome back to the second episode of First Impressions, where each time I'm going to quickly break down a different impression and teach you how to try doing voices for yourself. And on this episode, we're going to do another often mimicked, award-winning actor who may even give Walken a run for his money when it comes to most imitative. I'm, of course, talking about the one and only Robert De Niro. It's going to be good. We have fun. It's gonna be a good impression, huh? Huh? <laughs> hey. Jamu. Now, Robert De Niro is a multiple Oscar winning icon who always brings his classic Italian tough guy bravado to every role he plays and makes for a very easy to mimic persona. Hence why so many of us impressionists, and everyone else for that matter, all do a De Niro. Please welcome the one and only Mr. Robert De Niro! <laughs> um, mm. <laughs> these shoes? <laughs> hey, on these shoes? A good friend of mine, Jimmy, once told me, never get attached to anything that you cannot walk out on in 15 seconds flat if you spot the heat coming around the corner. You're gonna meet me, you're gonna meet, you meet the parents, you're gonna meet me, you're gonna meet. Yeah, it's right there, yeah. <laughs> What are we gonna talk about for an hour? What are we talk about? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, see, I see it, I see you, I, uh... I don't think so! <laughs> it's a spicy meet the ball. So with this clearly being another stock impression, meaning that if you do voices, you clearly do De Niro. And let's face it, every impressionist does, and most people can. So today we're just going to break down a basic De Niro impression, something that's passable, right? So for me, when it comes to De Niro, this is how I always find it. I always find it in the face. Now, first of all, it's a little bit New York, right? How you doing? You doing this? You doing that? So just put on a basic New York, right? So, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, the Italians in New York, you know, how you doing? You know, that kind of thing, forget about it, right? That kind of a thing, you can do that. This is a voice that works for a lot of people, right? Once you get the Italian down, you could do things like, you know, Joe Pesci, you could do all sorts of things. You could do whatever you want with it. Today, we're gonna focus on De Niro. So once you have that Italian, now what he does too, is he takes that Italian, he pushes it back a little bit, right? It's kind of the back of your mouth, kind of right here. It's a little restricted, it's a little restricted, right? Everything's pulled back. That's why his face does that, because everything's pulled back. Right? So once you get the voice right, and you kind of talk it from back here, what are we doing? It's back, right? Everything's back. It's not really forward. It's back in the throat. And then you put the face on there. And the face I like to think about is kind of the face you make when you're shaving. You do things like this. Eh? And I'm shaving, so you just kind of do that. Eh? And he's almost like he's frowning, even when he's smiling. It's weird, right? Like he's kind of like, how you doing? I'm very happy. What are you saying to me? I'm very happy. Look at my face. <laughs> I'm smiling. I'm laughing. <laughs> right? So once you kind of do all that, you get a little bit of squint in the eyes. You do the hands, right? Very Italian hands. You got to talk with your hands. How you doing? What are you doing? Are you talking? Is this this? Are you there? Who is this? Who is that guy? I know that guy. He's a very good guy. You call him a good fella. Eh? 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 That's a basic De Niro, right? So... Like I said, that's why it's a stock impression, because it's fairly easy to mimic. You're mimicking more a persona that he brings to every role than the actor himself. Just like Christopher Walken, De Niro has an almost incomprehensible amount of iconic roles in movies. Seriously, it's insane. Uh, like sharing the screen with Christopher Walken in The Deer Hunter, for which he was nominated for an Oscar, and also being nominated for movies like Awakenings, Cape Fear, and The Irishman, and winning for roles in The Godfather 2, A Raging Bull, huh? How you doing? Right? Not to mention movies like Heat, uh, Jackie Brown, and again, just like Walken, being just as successful parodying his tough guy persona in comedies like Analyze This, Dirty Grandpa, and the Meet the Parents franchise. And while there are literally hundreds of De Niro roles for us to choose to mimic, I'm not kidding when I say that. Today, we're going to take on what I think are his most imitated, iconic, 
classic lines from his most iconic classic performances. In this first clip, let's be fair. This may be, next to more cowbell, the most imitated, mimicked, impressioned line in all of impressiondom. I know that neither of those are actual terms, but I'm gonna use them. And that is De Niro in Taxi Driver. Everybody knows this line, right? Let's take a look at the clip. You talking to me? You talking to me? You talking to me? Well, who the hell else are you talking to? Talking to me? Well, I'm the only one here. Right? Come on. That's that whole scene with him just talking to himself in the mirror. You talking to me? Are you talking to me? You must be talking to me. I don't know anybody else you're talking to. I'm the only one here. You're talking to me. Right? That's, that's him. Now, in this, back in the 70s, when this movie came out, uh, he was young. So his voice, you know, clearly, just like walking, you know, early walking up here, go back, watch communion, things like that. His voice is up here. You watch him later. His voice is lower. Just the same way, De Niro is exactly the same thing. You know, back in the day, you know, maybe you get away with we'll talking up here. You know, the voice is a little higher. It's up in the head. You know, it's up behind the nose a little bit. It's up here. How you doing? What are you talking to me? I'm the only one here. I'm the only one here. You must be talking to me. But then over the years, right, it's a little deeper. It's a little deeper down here. So as we go through these, you'll notice that he ages a little bit in these clips. So again, the, the impression isn't wrong, right? That's the one thing you got to remember about impressions. That's why everybody says, have you heard this guy's? Walken, this guy's De Niro, right? Um, there are people who are known for their version of an impression, right? Um, and that's because they might take on a, a different era of that same person. Not everybody that does Walken uh, sounds like I do. You know, guys like Jay Moore or uh, Kevin Pollock, that walking's up here, higher. My walking's a little lower because my voice resonates. That's where I do it from, so that's how I do it. Same thing with De Niro. Right? Some guys are going to do up here, how are you? It's a little higher up, right? And other guys are going to do down here, but we're doing, right? All we've done is drop down a little bit, a little more whispery. But either way, you know, you're talking to me. You're talking like me. I like it, right? That's all you got to do. So it's not wrong. You just got to figure out, what De Niro am I imitating? This next clip is from two of my favorite De Niro films of all time. I couldn't choose between these two. And the reason why I made them the same clip was because he essentially plays the same character. And of course, I'm talking about, just like with Taxi Driver, the incredible combination of Martin Scorsese and Robert De Niro in Goodfellas and Casino. Now, Goodfellas and Casino, unbelievable films. Goodfellas, he plays Jimmy, a man, you know what I mean? An Irishman, he knows it. He's a tough guy. He runs the streets. He's got his nose, his fingers, all sorts of pies, right? Casino, same thing. He plays Ace. And what does Ace do? Ace runs the casino, right? He's down there. He's doing his best. He's got people down there. He's making some money, sending back home. But in both clips, he's taking on kind of the same persona, right? That's what we're doing. So let's take a look at a little compilation clip from Goodfellas and Casino. No, 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 no. You insulted him a little bit. You got a little out of order yourself. No, I didn't Sorry. insult him. I didn't insult insulted him. him a little bit. Meeting in the middle of the desert always made me nervous. It's a scary place. I knew about the holes in the desert, of course, and everywhere I looked, there could have been a hole. Normally, my prospects of coming back alive from a meeting with Nicky were 99 out of 100. But this time, when I heard him say a couple of hundred yards down the road, I gave myself 50-50. So good. Both of those movies are absolute classics, and I love every frame that De Niro is in, right? And so when you look at those clips, what is he doing? In the one, he's got that same classic line. A little bit. You know what? A little bit. You did. You insult him a little bit. Huh? That's that whole De Niro thing, right? We'll pull him back. We're not doing too much. My hands are here. My face is here. I'm pulled back. I'm leaning into it. I'm not leaning back. I'm pulling the impression. Got him back. My chin is back. What are we doing, right? I'm kind of tight together. How you doing? You did. You insulted him. A little bit. You did. A little bit. Eh? A little bit. Again, right? You can hear him. He's, he, uh, he's not quite taxi driver, De Niro. He's down a little bit more. Kind of almost flat line, right behind your nose. The first one was up a little higher, right? You kind of put it up behind your nose, up in that space, that cavernous space at the top of your mouth that kind of resonates into the head. 
Then you take that voice, you point it just a little bit more, right? You hear the difference? I'm here, and I point it up here. And now I'm talking from right here. I've, I've, I've squeezed it in. Just like with this, I'm squeezing a voice in, right? I'm getting a little older. How you doing? You know what I mean? When he said a couple hundred yards down the road, I gave myself 50-50, right? When he's doing the, uh, the narrating and the, the, the voiceovers, he's not going too big with it. He has to go right here. He has to talk about it. He has to tell you all the stuff he's doing, but you know what I mean? He's keeping it nice and mellow. He's keeping it right there. And that's where the narrow lives, and really in that nice. Hey, get bigger. What are you talking? What are you saying to me? Huh? Huh? You want me to come over there and smack your face? But he's still, it's still a tight. It's not a big, explosive impression. He's not a big, explosive uh, person. I mean, the voice and the anger could get big, huh? It gets big, but it's right. I got to smack you in the face. But it's, again, it's tight. Keep that in there. And that's a classic, dramatic De Niro. Now, just like Christopher Walken, Robert De Niro absolutely excels when he's on screen making fun of his tough guy persona. I really feel like a lot of these actors get to a point where like, I played a tough guy for years, I was a tough guy, I got a face, I did tough guy stuff. And while De Niro did sp sprinkle in some comedies throughout, it wasn't until he got a little older, uh, movies like Meet the Parents, Bad Grandpa, things like that, where he could really lean into like, you know, taking this tough guy persona and played it for laughs, right? And I don't think he ever did it better than in the original the very first edition of the Meet the Parents franchise, Meet the Parents. So let's take a little journey into the circle of trust and check out a clip. I, I, I had no idea you could milk a cat. Oh yeah, you can milk anything with nipples. I have nipples, Greg. Could you milk me? See, if I can't trust you, Greg, then I have no choice but to put you right back outside the circle. And once you're out, you're out. There's no coming back. And if I find that you are trying to corrupt my firstborn child, I will bring you down, baby. I will bring you down to Chinatown. <laughs> Absolute classic. Seriously. Absolutely inspired performance by De Niro to really crank up the tough guy, but play it for laughs. And that's what he's doing here. So when we're doing this line, we're doing the same thing. Listen to me, if I find out you're trying to corrupt my daughter, I'm telling you, I'm gonna bring you down. I'm gonna bring you down to Chinatown, mister. You understand me? What we're doing is we're doing the same thing. Now he's a little older, right? What about me, Greg? I have nipples. Can you milk me? Right? Now what is he doing? He's doing that same kind of short delivery, but he's playing for lefts. So what he's doing, he's coming up on the end, right? If you notice how he delivers his lefts, he's asking questions, he's doing very short. He's not getting down here, right? When we get tough, what are you doing to me? What are you doing? Huh? I'm going down all the time. Right? When he's doing his tough guy stuff, what are we doing? Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Are you going to talk to me? What are you doing over here? But when he's doing this, what about me, Greg? Can you milk me? Right? There's a little up on the end of it, so you're kind of just bringing it up, kind of playing the tough guy for a left. You're kind of giving it a little, elevating it up to uh, a funnier delivery. And that's just kind of the difference between De Niro's dramatic delivery and De Niro's comedic delivery because the voice really doesn't change. Neither does the persona. That's what's so fascinating about Robert De Niro, a character who is truly himself, no matter whether he's the scariest guy in the movie or he's the funniest guy. So what an unbelievably iconic actor and an incredible impression to add to your arsenal. Thanks so much for watching episode two of First Impressions. I really hope you guys uh, try these out. Go home, practice, get better, because that's the way that you do get better at things. I always like to say that we are given gifts, but talents are those gifts practiced, right? That's exactly what it is. So take the gifts that you're given, take the abilities that you have, practice them, and that's how they turn into talents. And hopefully you maybe can find a little talent for doing voices yourself. Now, in the first two episodes, we focused on Oscar award-winning dramatic actors who, while dipping their toes into the comedic world, aren't comedians per se. But next week, we're going to focus on a comedian who, while gracing the silver screen in a few memorable roles, has spent most of his time, quite frankly, offending people on stage. Who is it? Stick around and find out. See you next week, everyone.